Hey everyone, welcome to the session by Simply Learn. In today's session, we'll learn all about Selenium. But before we proceed, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. Now let's jump in and see what's in store for us. First, we'll look at what manual testing is and some of its drawbacks. After that, we'll understand the need for automation testing and what Selenium is. We'll also learn about Selenium's suite of tools. We'll understand the advantages and limitations of Selenium testing. And lastly, we'll look at Selenium jobs and salaries and finally how Simply Learn can help you. So moving on, what exactly is manual testing? Well, back in the early 2000s, testing was mainly done manually. It involved the physical execution of test cases against various applications to detect bugs and errors. It required the knowledge of a testing tool. Over time, this process came with a lot of challenges. It proved to be extremely time consuming. It posed a high risk of error. It required the presence of a tester throughout. It had a limited scope and there was no support for performance and batch testing. Now, considering all these drawbacks, a desperate need to automate the testing process was in demand. Jason Huggins, an engineer at ThoughtWorks, bugged with a strenuous job, decided to try and automate this process. He developed a JavaScript program called the JavaScript Test Runner. Although initially it was only deployed by the employees at ThoughtWorks, it was later renamed as Selenium and was made open source. Since its inception, Selenium has been a powerful automation testing tool to test various web applications. Now, what exactly is Selenium? Selenium is an automation testing tool used to test web applications across various browsers. Now, it can only test web applications and requires other tools to test desktop and mobile applications. Well, that's a bummer, huh? Now, let's look at some of its features. It is open source. It consists of a dedicated set of tools, which we'll discuss shortly. It is primarily developed in JavaScript. It provides a record and play feature without having to learn any scripting language. It can also be coded in several programming languages. It is a browser and a platform independent tool, meaning it can run on multiple browsers like Chrome, Safari, Firefox, to name a few, and on multiple operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, or even Linux. Now let's go ahead and look at the Selenium suite of tools. The first tool is Selenium IDE. Selenium Integrated Development Environment was developed by Shinya Kasatani back in 2006. It was both a Firefox and a Chrome extension that can automate the browser functionality. It comes with a record and play feature that records the user interactions and exports them as a reusable script. Now when executed, it plays the recorded actions. Any deviation in the result indicates the presence of a bug. Coming to the script generated, it can be modified using Selenium's commands like actions, accessors, and even assertions. You could check out the detailed tutorial for IDE in the description box. The link is mentioned. Now, Selenium IDE can be deployed on different platforms like Mac OS, Linux, and even Windows. IDE ceased to exist back in 2017 when Firefox released its Firefox 55 version. A robust and revamped version was released by Apply Tools in 2018. Now, this new interface came with a Selenium side runner that allowed all IDE tests to run parallelly on multiple browsers. Now, let's look at the typical interface and understand its components. First up on the top, we have the menu bar. Now, here you can either create a new project or open an existing project or even save a project. After that, we have the toolbar. We can run all the tests if in case we have multiple test cases. Next to that, we have a button to help run the current test. IDE also has a debugger option used for step execution. And then you can also regulate the speed of execution using the feature. Next up, we have the start and stop recording feature. Now this icon, as the name suggests, helps to record the test case. Next, we have the address bar. Now this basically shows the URL of the application under test. Moving on, we have the test script editor box. This is where all the script tests are recorded. 
Now it has four attributes. First up, we have the command, which indicates the actions performed on the web elements. Then we have a target. Now this indicates the element on which the action is being performed. And finally, we have a value. Now this is an optional field. We can send values to various web elements on the browser. Next up, we have the test case pane. Now this basically consists of all the test cases that have been recorded up to date. Finally, we have the test log and reference. Now this is a running log. As well as in when your test script runs, the ID will log it here. It indicates if the command was run successfully or not. We also have a reference tag that will show the complete description of commands and how to use them. Now let me show you a quick demo on how IDE really works. In the beginning, you'll have to install the IDE plugin. So you can basically go to Google and say Selenium IDE plugin. Click on the first link. And you can say add to Chrome. However, it's added in mine. So I'll just leave it to that. Moving on, let's go ahead and click on the icon here to the type top right corner. Now this is what the typical ID looks like. So let's go ahead and record a new test in a new project. And let me call the project name Amazon underscore books. So now it requires the website URL on which we are going to be testing. So in our case, we're using Amazon. So let's go to the Amazon website. Let's copy its URL. Paste it here and then say start recording. Now, once I click on start recording, it's going to record all my user actions. So let's go ahead. So I'd wish to look at today's deals. So I go ahead and click on today's deals. After that, say I'm interested in looking at books. So I go ahead and click on books here. After that, I wish to click on say the fourth book here, I say add to cart. So I click on that. After that, let's go ahead and check out. Here we go, the book has been added. Once I'm done with that, I'll close my browser and stop recording here. Let's call it books for now. So here, all the commands have been logged. And as you can see, once I click on the play button, it's going to display all the recorded commands. So let's go ahead and click on that. But before that, let me reduce the text execution speed so that it's easier for you to see. And now I say play. So as you can see, all the commands are turning green, indicating that all the steps have been performed successfully. So here you go. It goes to books and that is it. Well, it was a little fast. However, all our commands have been successfully executed. Finally, a message is displayed saying completed successfully. So this is a small example of how to show you how IDE works. So going back, let's go ahead and look at the next tool. Next up, we have Selenium Remote Control. RC was developed by Paul Hammond and is a server written in Java. RC makes provision for writing application tests in various programming languages, be it C Sharp, Perl, PHP, Python, etc. The RC server accepts commands from the user program and passes them to the browser as Selenium core JavaScript commands. Now consider a typical JavaScript program, say test.js used by google.com. Now the program can access pages within the google.com domain like google.com slash mail or login. However, it cannot access elements of other domains like yahoo.com. So local copies of Selenium core and the web browser have to be installed so that they belong to the same domains. The server acts as a client configured HTTP proxy and tricks the browser into believing that Selenium core and the web application being tested came from the same origin. Now that's pretty cool, huh? But moving on, let's look at the next tool in the suite. We have the Selenium web driver. It was developed by Simon Stewart and WebDriver revolutionized automation testing. It was the first cross-platform cross testing framework that provided the interface to create and run test cases. 
WebDriver allows the users to perform actions like click or hover on web elements. Again, the scripts can be written in any programming language, be it Perl, PHP, Java, etc. It also supports frameworks like TestNG or JUnit for test management. But the main USP of WebDriver is that unlike RC, it doesn't require a core engine and interacts with the browser natively. To learn more about WebDriver, there's a link in the description box. Make sure to click on that to get a better understanding. And the final tool is the Selenium Grid. Now it was developed by Patrick Lightbody. The main objective of Grid was to minimize the test execution speed. Grid was designed to distribute commands to different machines simultaneously. It is exceptionally flexible and can be integrated with other tools. The typical setup of a grid consists of a central hub connected to several machines. The hub receives the test to be executed along with the information about the OS and the browser to be run on. Now the hub accordingly picks one of the machines that conforms to the requirements. Later, it delegates the tasks. So with that, we've come to the end of Selenium suite components. Now let's look at the advantages of Selenium testing. First up, we have speed and accuracy. The testing process is quick and accurate since any human errors are ruled out. It is also open source, meaning anybody can download and start working on small projects. And as we've discussed earlier, it supports a wide range of programming languages and operating systems. It is also very easy to, ex to implement. It doesn't require a strong knowledge about the tool. And lastly, the main advantage is the fact that it is reusable. Moving on, let's look at the disadvantages of Selenium testing. Since it does not have a central body governing its working, Selenium does not have a reliable tech support. It can only test web applications. Selenium also fails with image testing. It doesn't provide an inbuilt reporting facility and has to be integrated with third-party tools. Some of these tools could be TestNG or JUnit. They also help with test management. And while using WebDriver, the user is expected to have a fair knowledge of the programming language used. Moving on, let's look at the Selenium jobs and salaries. Now here are some of the roles performed by test engineers. First up, the employee is expected to develop test cases and detect bugs and errors, to design the full framework for implementation, to ensure the better best communication practices, to define test strategies for fixing software issues. So these are some of the key roles of a test engineer. Moving on to the salaries, according to Payscale, the average salary of an automation engineer in the US is a whopping 90,000 US dollars per annum. The average salary of an automation engineer in India is around 5,24,000 rupees per annum. Now let's look at the top tier companies that deploy Selenium. Some of these companies are Google, Infosys, TCS, Capgemini, among others. So now you must be wondering how Simply Learn could help you. If you're looking to make a career as a test engineer, then I'd recommend you go to some of the courses offered by us. So let's go to our official website. You could visit our official website and look up for the course that you want. I say Selenium training. Now you get a few options and depending on your requirement, you can take up the appropriate course. We have automation testing masters program. We have a Selenium 3.0 training program and we have JavaScript certification training. Now you can click on one of these programs get a brief overview and some of its key features. So finally, let's look at the key takeaways. Now, what did we learn? So first we understood the shortcomings of manual testing and why test automation was actually necessary. Then we understood what Selenium is and some of its key salient features. Then to answer the question as to why Selenium is so efficient, we learned about its robust suite of tools. Finally, we understood some of its advantages. And every tool comes with, with its set of disadvantages, so we learned about some of the limitations. And finally, we spoke about the scope of Selenium. So with that, we've reached the end of this session.
I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching. Keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Also make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.